happy that you're all here. This is our continuing effort. We go out several times a year uh, in different parts of the district and invite people to tell us what's on your mind, ask questions if you want, I'll answer them as best we can. Uh, but it's a listening concept too, so don't feel as though it has to be a question. You can tell me what you're thinking or feeling and, uh, and we work from there. The, our, the Gulf War veterans have been treated just like the Vietnam veterans were under Agent Orange. There's been a lot of proof that sarin gas and other issues were used on us. I myself am literally bedridden over half of the week. I'm unemployable and since 1995, I've been fighting the VA to try getting some disability compensation. found out the VA was tremendously understaffed, so that there were delays of six months to a year just to get your initial disability resolved. Then there's all sorts of delays on appeals. Can I just sure. a moment? The, what, my primary point is that we veterans are treated guilty until proven innocent. I understand that. That's case. why I'm talking about the disability process. That's the process you're talking about, right? Yes. The so, guilt until proven right, is. There's a different level of, uh, of proof for the VA system, a different level for the Department of Defense system. Yes, you have to go through two different disability hearings the way it's set up now. So since we've had those hearings, they have been trying to work out a system where they combine the two, have an advocate for the person who's in the process, uh, have care, you know, managing uh, care, more doctors, more nurses, more psychiatrists in these facilities and in, in the VA as well. We increased the VA budget, the largest increase in 77 years. But because we <coughs> see the influx. A lot of people, that we just passed it. You know, the money's out, yeah, they're just starting to get the money filtered on that. But there's a lot of people that don't want to admit this war is returning a lot of people in very bad condition. Oh, yeah. All right? And one way not to acknowledge that is not to raise the VA budget. Because if you don't have to you know, raise the budget, then everybody makes believe that there aren't you know, 40,000 people out there with serious, serious injuries. So over the objections of some, we funded the largest increase in 77 years trying to get people so you could process a claim more quickly so they should have a doctor, have a nurse, have a psychiatrist, have somebody to work with on that. And so we, we did that, we're in motion on that, and we continue to have hearings. We've had four follow-up oversight hearings on what they're doing in terms of trying to change the disability process on that, uh, and we're pounding away at this thing. We're going to continue to do that because I think the majority of people down in Congress and both parties understand what people's sacrifices have been and understand our obligation. I am ashamed that every American is not covered. I'm ashamed that people in this country have to go broke if somebody gets really sick. I'm ashamed that unions in my town are pitted against taxpayers unnecessarily and that people have to decide whether we're going to buy books or we're going to cover our municipal employees. We can't buy books for our kids in school. This is America. In Channel 2 this week, we saw Germany, France, Japan, every other industrial nation in the world, all of their people are covered with affordable health care. Affordable. Nobody goes broke with those. Bill, it's a bipartisan bill that would allow states to, to come up with their own system of insuring all of theirs, and we'd support them by helping them with the data, helping them with the technology, <coughs> doing that basis. But the idea is it really has to be global. It has to be national to work and to cut out the administrative costs. The 800-pound gorilla is the insurance company. Right. They employ a lot of people, and they get them motivated. You saw the Harry and Louise commercials in the 1990s. You know, uh, misinformation that gets out there. And there's a healthy amount of people in Congress from very parts of the country that just don't believe it's the government's role to step in and do something on health care. And there's still a very large number of people down the same ones that don't think they ought to do anything with education at the national level. So these fights go on. I think <coughs> the momentum is swinging in our direction do something about that. I think that's why you see the candidates talking about it going into November. They understand. I think that the shame of it was, not this most recent debate, but the one previous to that, uh, it was a pretty healthy debate between people, and one of the moderators complained that they had spent the first 17 minutes talking about health care. What's wrong with that? I mean, I'd rather have them spend that 17 minutes on health care than 17 minutes on a lapel pin. You know, on, on, I mean, this is what people care about. You know, and they want to work that out with the town and trying to resolve that. Is there... I understand the town and the state budget somewhat. Is there anything that can be done at the federal level so that uh, the, the financial crisis that practically every town on the North Shore, probably the whole state, is facing can get some relief? There are programs for libraries in the Elementary and Secondary Education Act, and there's a separate library fund as well on that, and it's usually competitive grants. So if libraries you know, participate, they go through the grant process, and then they're selected or not selected on that. We're happy to work with a number of our libraries that <laughs> receive these grants. So we're, our office is prepared. Uh, the people that do grants, our office sit down and try to work with them. And 
uh, and get that in. And push it. We've increased that amount in, that, in 2007. It's been under a little bit of attack in the last six or seven years where it's been either frozen or actually, you know, try to decrease it on that. We're trying to put some more funding in that so that more people would be able to get the grants. Happening, you know, there was no oversight up until January 2007. Right. right? Because unfortunately, instead of seeing it as an institutional thing, which it is, Congress as an institution has an obligation to do oversight no matter who's in the White House. Right. But it wasn't seen that way. It was seen as sort of like home team was in the White House. Right. They were going to cover no matter what. So there wasn't a lot of oversight done. Come January 2007, We've had hundreds of oversight hearings, all right, in the Armed Services Committee, in the Intelligence Committee, in the uh, Judiciary Committee, in the Government Oversight Committee, the Foreign Affairs Committee, and we are going at all of these issues. Now they're very clever. They classify just about every sneeze that's made on the White House. We have emails that have disappeared. We have you know, all of this, and we have subpoenaed all those records. So we are, people should not get the feeling that this isn't being pursued. There are just some substantial roadblocks they keep trying to throw. We keep trying to leap them and push on. Work as a volunteer four months with the military, with in Guam. Four months as a, I have the records for the uh, application, everything. Now, since then, I uh, uh, taught, I, I learned the language, I uh, qualified my education. I'm a civil engineer. Right now, I'm building a bridge right on the town border between Sagas and Lel. Yeah. I'm paying my tax. <laughs> no, okay, hold on. I just go for it. My, my, I'm being treated as a terrorist by the system. Yeah. That's wrong. I have applied for citizenship three years ago. I'm still here. And I asked this is the third time I, I, I call. I asked the congressman to help me. If I'm a terrorist, just kick me out from this country. If I'm not, do something about this. I have, I have an article for another Kurdish guy. Back in my homeland in Kurdistan, not one, could, one American uh, soldier has even wounded, not even got hurt. The uh, gasoline prices, the fuel, yes, and, and, and on the other hand, our responsibility to, in the world, to help with global warming. Gasoline prices and fuel is a short range and a long range situation on this. Um, the short range thing is that we really <coughs> believe that there's, I believe, and I think others have shared that, that there's some amount of collusion going on between some of these oil companies. Yeah. What? We have given, I know it surprised everybody apparently, but not as surprised, shot to the White House. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but despite the fact we continue to give them all the authority they need, we, we passed some more bills just this year, the Attorney General and the Federal Trade Commission have the authority to go after these guys. Mm. But you have to have executive will, I mean, they have to go out and do it.